Hey everyone, it's uh, Professor Lee. So I'm going to show you today how to uh, place the leads and attach the wires for a 12 lead EKG. Now, even though this is called a 12 lead uh, EKG, we actually are only putting on uh, 10 tabs around the chest area. And then we are going to put on four peripheral leads, one on each arm and one on each leg. And so we start with the chest leads, and I'm actually gonna place this card here for you so that you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see that there, um, but I will put it back up there. There is a uh, method, uh, there's like very distinct locations like fourth intercostal space um, and so on that you are to put the leads. These are the leads and uh, they are impregnated with electrode gel on the back of them, and so they are super sticky. Now, if you have a patient who is hairy, you may need to shave, shave their chest or uh, the, their arms or their legs so that the gel on these leads uh, sticks to them uh, sufficiently. So the way that I put these leads on that generally works pretty well is uh, for lead one, for V1, you want to go on the right side of the sternum. Now this is the patient's right. Remember when you are looking at a patient, they are always in anatomical position, which typically means if you are looking directly at them, your left and right sides are going to be reversed. So the patient's right will be this side. So we are going to uh, look at the patient's right side and V1 typically goes about uh, mid nipple line where uh, on on the right side of the sternum. Now on our friend Bob here, you can see that the sternum is here. On a typical patient, you can actually feel the uh, breastbone, which is the sternum there. Now V2 is gonna go directly across from V1 on the other side of the sternum. Again, I usually go about mid nipple line. Don't touch people's nipples, it's weird. Um, so here, that's about the fourth intercostal space. Uh, it's hard and sometimes it's painful to be pushing down on people's intercostal spaces. And so I usually, especially for males, um, typically will just kind of uh, use an imaginary line about nipple line um, to put V1 and V2. So there's, I've got one, two, and then I skip three, which I know is gonna go about here, in here and I put four and the way that where I place four four goes about the fifth intercostal space and so again you can poke and go and feel spaces that's hard to do on this guy because he doesn't have any ribs but you can feel uh, intercostal spaces and the thing is you don't want you want to make sure that you don't have an EKG lead on a bone because that can cause some interference um, with the uh, reading and so you want to uh, try to avoid putting it on top of a bone so that's the reason for putting them in inter intercostal spaces the spaces between the ribs but for uh, one two I'm gonna skip three I'm gonna do four I usually go mid nipple line down and I go somewhere a little bit below the breast now it is possible that if you have a large breasted woman that you may need to move the breast tissue up. If that is the case, never cup and move. Um, you want to take the back of your hand in a very clinical measure and just lift the breast tissue, place the lead down, lay the breast tissue back down and remove your hand. Again, never take your hand and cup um, because that could be misread as another type of touching and we don't want any of those issues. All right, so we've got one, two, four. I like to skip five and then I go over to six. And for six, uh, it is mid axillary line and mid nipple line. So mid axillary over here, and I'm gonna move this, it may shake a little bit and I apologize for that, but I'm doing this without my trusty assistance here. And so we've got mid axillary, mid armpit, mid nipple. So we put six about in there. All right, I'm gonna prop him back up here. And let me grab a couple more leads. All 
And then I go back in and I put uh, four and five, or three and five on. So I always go one, two, four, six, three, five. I don't know why I do it that way. I'm weird. I've been doing it that way for 20 years. And it just is how I, I don't know if it's how I learned or how I just memorized it, but that's what I do. I do one, three, five, one, one, two, four, six, three, five. You can put them on however you want to put them on. However it makes sense to you, do it that way. Uh, this is just how I do it um, and how I teach students to do it because it's how I do it. Um, but I will tell you the same thing I tell my students, which is do it however you want. So two is right between one and three. So we're going to put that up right there. And then lastly, four is right between three and five right here. So we're going to put that right over here where it looks like his chest tube's coming out. We're going to put that right there. All right, so we've got all of those guys uh, lined up. And then we need to put one on each arm. Again, you want to avoid a bone. It's better to put it on a place with a little bit of tissue. Uh, some providers would like for you to put them on the inside of the arms some would like for you to put them on the outside you put them wherever your provider wants them to be put uh, i prefer to put them on the outside of the arms so i'm going to put that over there i'm going to put this guy over here and then i'm also putting two on the legs uh, in the calf area. Now, when I put them on the legs, I'm going to flip this around in a second so I can show you again. Um, here by my self recording, let me flip this around. So, when I put these on on the legs, I point the tabs upward. And when I put them on on the top, all of the tabs for the arms and the chest leads are all pointing down. And that makes all of the um, tabs, all of the electrode tabs, pointing towards the center of the patient's body. And the reason for that is, is because we are going to put on all of these lead wires and they are all attached to this guy, which is the hub, uh, the wire base that all of these wires plug into. All of these guys plug into these harnesses here. And if the patient moves or if they are really long legged, um, or have really long arms, I don't want the wires, the tabs uh, to pull up or off. So since I lay, I tend to lay the um, harness right here on the patient's torso or abdomen, the tabs pointing upwards from the legs will not be pulling backwards from the lead wire clamps. And likewise for the arms. So let me show you the lead wire clamps. We have several on one side. We have V2, V3, V1. So we're gonna plug those in, one, two, three. And then we also have right leg, right arm. Again, it's really important that you make sure that you are putting these on the patient's right leg and right arm uh, and not your right side. Also important to make sure that your lead wires aren't crossed because that can cause artifacts and interference. So I like to untangle them before I get started. Okay, so I've got V3, one, two, three. Put this guy on here, clamp that down. V1, two, and then my right arm, and then I have my right leg. And then we repeat the same thing with the left side. And I lay this harness right here. 
and you can see the other wires on this side. So that's pretty much it. Uh, we have four, six, five, left arm. I try to get all these wires out of the way so they're not tripping up anywhere. Make sure all my leads are pushed down. Now, if your leads won't stick, you may need to rub some, uh, take an alcohol pad and rub it on there. Make sure you get all the oils or lotions off of somebody's skin um, or shave them, like I said previously. Uh, so this is about what it should look like when the patient is all hooked up and ready to go for their EKG. And then the EKG machines themselves vary uh, dramatically. They, some of them are super simple. Some of them are a little bit more advanced. Actually, we have two. So this is the first one that we have where we can input all the patient's information. We have recall capabilities on this one. Um, so this one does a little bit more. And then we have this really basic guy down here who um, doesn't have quite as many features as this advanced one up here. So uh, the EKGs themselves, after you've got your patient all hooked up, um, actually probably before you would put your patient information in here and you can actually see that Bob's um, information our patient Bob his information is in here already and he is good to go and then once the EKG is all hooked up you would push EKG now it won't read him because he is not a real person and there's no rhythm for the, it to read but if there was then the rhythm would show up here on the screen and then also start to print there and so that's pretty much the gist of uh, how to set up and complete an electrocardiogram, otherwise known as an EKG.